Hey guys, what's up, and welcome to Skillcap's 9.1 tier list update for all things healer. Last time we did one of these, it was based purely on patched notes. So, were our predictions right? Well, now with the season well underway and players finally getting full gear, we thought it was about time to reach out to our rank 1 consultants to come up with what we believe to be a consolidated tier list. Also, if you're looking to increase your rating this season, be sure to check us out at skillcap.com slash wow. Over the years, we've seen people go from challenger to gladiator, all by implementing the lessons we teach in our videos. In fact, we are so confident in your results that we're the only service to offer a money back guarantee. Our class courses teach you the fundamentals you need to master your class in PvP. And we have hundreds of exclusive commentaries featuring matchup breakdowns directly from the best players in the world. You'll also gain premium access in our Discord server, where our team of pros respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are truly serious about improving. To make this easier, we're going to be splitting our healers into five different tiers, ranging from C up to our prestigious S plus tier. Let's start off with our lowest tier. Our first edition, despite the plethora of changes they received going into this season, is, you guessed it, Mistweaver Monk. Yeah, this probably isn't a surprise. Mistweaver just isn't performing like we originally predicted based off patch notes. They got so many new talents, which all genuinely did appear to look strong, Dematerialized to help surviving while stunned, Eminence to help avoiding crowd control, and even Peaceweaver to give a very overpowered effect to revival. So, what went wrong? Why are Mistweavers still at the bottom of our healer tier list? Well, plain and simple, they lack answers. You have Cocoon and nothing else, and a lot of the time damage is so insanely high right now that you just can't heal it unless you have damage reductions or super strong cooldowns for your team. Mistweaver right now just doesn't have a place in the meta, but we have seen it perform incredibly well even in tournaments, but as an answer to dot classes. So if we do end up seeing a shift in the meta and specs like Affliction Warlock rising to the top, Mistweaver, even without any changes, will probably end up a lot higher on this list. For now though, there just isn't any denying it's the weakest healer right now and worthy of our bottom tier. Jumping up now to our B tier, we've got Holy Paladins. If you cast your memory back to Season 1 of Shadowlands, almost every single composition had a Holy Paladin. Well, Blizzard definitely sacrificed Paladins going into this season with a multitude of different nerfs. Their biggest fall from Grace was two big nerfs to both Divine Favor and Light Grace. These PvP talents were so important at allowing Paladin to have any real healing output outside of their wings. Not to mention, we've obviously seen the meta speed up substantially. Damage is high, and not just during enemy cooldowns. As a result, it leaves Paladins just honestly unable to heal the consistent damage. Sure, you've got strong cooldowns to trade and even good healing during your wings, but once these are down, you're left with nothing, which leaves Paladins very limited in their composition options, needing either Rush Down or Caster Comps, which currently don't really exist at the moment, and even then, Holy Paladins are not the preferred healer. In fact, that's just a Holy Paladin sad reality at the moment, and is why they're in our second lowest tier. Okay, so once again, we're going to be moving up in strength, and now up to our A tier. Inside of our A tier, we're going to be placing Holy Priest. Holy Priest, much like Paladin, hasn't got all that much healing output and relies on the reduced cooldown of Guardian and the burst healing of Serenity in order to counteract damage. Much like Mistweaver, you also lack any damage reductions. So what justifies Holy Priest being higher than either? Well, Holy Priest can perform very well in setup compositions. We've seen it have very good success in both RMP and jungle. The easy to land on demand crowd control from Chastise or Stun from Censure combined with Psychic Scream can be game changing. On top of that, something else Holy Priest brings that the other two weaker healers lack is the ability to play offensive with both an offensive purge and also a substantial damage output, especially when Venthyr. Sure, they may be lacking in the healing department, but their offensive play, niche cooldowns, and strong composition options will keep them inside of our respectable A tier. Okay, that's it for our A tier, and now we're getting to those healers that define the meta, be it 2s or 3s. These healers are all super strong and have standout composition options. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It costs nothing and helps us out a ton. Joining our S tier, we have the stronger of the two priest healing specializations, Discipline. Discipline Priest is surprisingly doing very well this season. We originally thought the huge nerfs to Ultimate Radiance would hurt their ability to survive, especially in the melee dominant meta that we currently have. Well, buffs to Atonement and the strong new addition of Inner Light and Shadow have helped combat both sustained healing and mana efficiency. Something Discipline also has that makes them strong is damage reductions. Both Pain Suppression and Power Word Barrier are great at combating enemy offensive cooldowns. Then you've even still got Rapture for those sticky situations. Granted, much like all of our healers so far on this list, Discipline's healing output is nothing amazing. But it really doesn't need to be. 
Discipline thrives in setup compositions like Jungle Cleave and Rogue Mage Priest, where their teammates can easily avoid damage, allowing Discipline to play to their strength, which is being offensive. Providing that little extra damage during a setup or even giving your whole team Dark Archangel, not to mention still providing an offensive purge and added crowd control. Joining Priests inside of our S tier, we've got Restoration Shamans. Restoration Shamans right now are performing great, having a multitude of very strong compositions in 3v3 and even 2v2. Their niche right now is as the go-to offensive healer for a lot of melee cleaves and even melee caster compositions like Shadow Priest Warrior. What makes Restoration Shamans strong is first of all their instant healing output between your Primordial Wave, Covenant Ability, Riptide, Healing Stream, and Unleash Life, you're not really required to cast all that often. Then if you do fall behind, you've even got a ton of recovery cooldowns like Ascendance, Spirit Link, Earth and Wall Totem, and the new Empowered Healing Tide from Living Tide. What Shamans do best though is being incredibly self-sufficient and is one of the predominant reasons they're so prevalent in melee cleaves. Having the ability to ground, wind shear, or even kite with Ghost Wolf allows them to be less reliant on peels. Not to mention, one of the major reasons shamans are thriving in this fast-paced meta is the Deep Tremor Stone Legendary. This huge amount of added damage combined with their ability to spam purge makes them able to slot incredibly well into a number of different cleaves. All right then, last but definitely not least, we're going to be adding an S plus tier. We believe this final healer is definitely a cut above the rest. You guessed, if not only by process of elimination, yep, it's Restoration Druid. Restoration Druids had what would be considered a slow start to the season in 3v3, with games being just too fast to see them thrive. Well, while this was going on, Druids were dominating in 2v2, being essentially the meta-defining healer. Well, now with gear levels reaching their peak and the meta slowing down a little, Restoration Druids are finally blooming inside of 3v3 as well now. What makes them just so powerful is, first of all, the pure healing output that you're capable of putting out, even if it's just your healing over time effects enhanced by Adaptive Swarm. Then, if enemies do drop low, you've got so many strong recovery mechanics, all of which are such a low cooldown. Nature Swiftness is a lay on hands every one minute, which can be reduced by up to 10 seconds with the Ready for Anything conduit. Iron Bark gives you a damage reduction and improves your hots every 90 seconds. And then even the added healing from Scenarian Ward and Swift Mend are incredibly strong and come with such short cooldowns. Much like Shaman Druids, due to their forms are very self-sufficient and if played well are not a viable kill target for a lot of meta compositions, on top of still having the ability to bring stuns or crowd control with Cyclones. Overall, just making them the strongest healer in patch 9.1. Okay then guys, on screen now, you'll see a recap of our healer specs and their tier rankings. Honestly, if you're looking for a strong healer this season, anything from our A tier onwards is more than capable of reaching any rating. But as always, every healer on this list is playable to some extent and just depends on your goals. And there you have it guys, that's our best healers for patch 9.1 tier list update. If you agree with our placing, be sure to let us know in the comments, and if not, what would you change and why? For now though, hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.